Hi, my name is Zoe, and I'm a student learning English. Let me tell you about my life in New York and my amazing teacher. You can read my story and learn English with me. It's a sunny summer day, and I'm on a train. There are two ladies sitting opposite me. I don't know them, but from their conversation, I can tell they're foreigners. I don't understand much of what they're saying, but I know they're speaking English. I also want to speak English, but I'm a beginner. I don't know many words. However, this is a chance for me to practice. I decide to try speaking to the ladies. I say a few sentences in my basic English, and they understand me. I don't know many words, and I speak slowly. But the ladies are kind and patient. We have a simple conversation. I tell them I want to learn English. They're happy to hear that and tell me they're from America, traveling home from a conference. We chat for about ten minutes. Then it's time for me to get off the train. As I thank them, they give me their address and phone number, inviting me to visit them in America. This is how my journey in learning English begins. After this meeting, I decide to work on my English skills more. I translate texts and watch films in English. I practice for two hours almost every day. In six months, I'm able to speak quite well. It's great, but I want to know more. I decide to go to New York to study English. In New York, I choose a school that seems good. I'm excited about my first lesson on Monday. On my first day, I meet my teacher and the other students. My teacher is a young lady. Very nice. She asks everyone to introduce themselves and say where they're from. Then the lesson starts. Our teacher asks us how we've studied English before and what we think is the best method. I tell her I like translating songs and other texts, but I don't know the best method to learn English. Our teacher says she'll teach us a very effective method based on using the language. She tells us we won't have to study or use textbooks. We'll immerse ourselves in the language. It's great for me because I don't like studying or textbooks. We need languages for communication, to say and understand ideas, so the best way to learn is to use it for exchanging ideas. This is what we'll do in our course. Most of the time, we'll speak. Many students spend a lot of time memorizing words or learning grammar rules, but don't use English for speaking. You need to learn new words and grammar, but you don't have to study them. Our teacher shows us a simple and effective way to learn new words and grammar. I like what she says. The lesson continues. We talk about our hobbies and what we do in our free time. We speak in pairs or with our teacher. It's great, and we speak for the entire lesson. I enjoy it so much. I've never spoken so much English in one lesson before. I'm happy and look forward to the next lesson. I go to school on Tuesday. One student asks an interesting question. What's the best way to learn new words? Our teacher says reading is statistically the most effective way. People who read learn twice as fast as those who don't. It's good to read for at least 30 minutes every day. The book or text should be interesting to you and you should enjoy reading it. It should also be at your level. When you see a word you don't understand, look it up in a dictionary, understand it, and continue reading. You don't have to write the word down or make a list. Just focus on understanding the text. Reading helps you learn new words and how to connect them correctly in sentences. It's a very effective way to learn new words. After the lesson, I ask other students where I can find a job. They tell me to go to a job center. The job center offers many jobs for students. I'm happy to know where to find a job. After school, I go to the job center and ask the lady there about the best jobs for students. 
she tells me about some good jobs. Cleaner or waiter in a cafe. I tell her I have no experience. She says my English is good enough for the cafe job, and it's a chance to speak more English. I can start on Thursday. It's great, and I'm happy to have a job where I can practice English. On Wednesday, I go to school again. There's a student from South Korea who is quieter than the others. He asks about improving his pronunciation. He understands English well but wants to improve his speaking. Our teacher explains that pronunciation problems happen because we use our mouth muscles as we would in our native language, making our pronunciation different from native speakers. It's not a big problem since people usually understand us, but we can improve it with a technique called shadowing. Shadowing is simple. Listen to a video or audio recording and immediately copy what you hear. It's like how children learn their first language by copying their parents. Our teacher shows us a shadowing video on YouTube, and we try it for three minutes. She says it's also good for preparing for presentations. This is interesting to me. I've never heard of this technique before. After the lesson, I ask about sports activities at school. They have a table tennis team and a football team. The football team trains today at 5. I'm happy because I love sports. At the training, I meet players from different countries. Brazil, Japan, Russia, Spain, Argentina, and Italy. I enjoy the training and am happy to have new friends from the football team. Tomorrow, I start my job. On Thursday, we have a new student from Italy named Monica. Her English is beautiful, with good pronunciation and fluency. Our teacher is happy and asks about her progress. Monica says she learned English at home using techniques from our teacher. Reading, shadowing, and thinking aloud. Thinking in English more than in Italian helped her. This is new to me so I ask about thinking aloud. Our teacher explains it's very effective and simple. You think in your native language all day. Now, start thinking in English and say aloud what you think. It's like practicing speaking to yourself. Monica shares her experience with thinking aloud. She started with simple sentences, then gradually made them more complex. This technique helped her speak without translating in her head. Her English improved quickly, and she could converse easily. I decide to try thinking aloud to improve my English. I'm excited about my time in America. I have a great teacher, new friends from my football team, and I'm starting a job where I can practice English. I look forward to improving my English every day. At the cafe, my first day is a bit nerve-wracking. I practice the phrases I learned. Can I take your order? Would you like anything else? And have a great day. My coworkers are supportive, correcting my mistakes gently. Customers are patient, and some even compliment my efforts. Speaking with native speakers helps me pick up on their accents and intonations. I start to mimic their pronunciation, practicing my American accent every chance I get. In the evenings, I attend a language exchange meetup. Here, I meet people from all over the world who want to learn English. We take turns practicing English and our native languages. I make friends with a guy named Juan from Mexico and a girl named Anna from Russia. We help each other with pronunciation and vocabulary. It's fun and educational. I learn new words like awesome and totally, which help me sound more natural when speaking. Back in class, our teacher introduces us to tongue twisters to help with pronunciation. We repeat phrases like, she sells seashells by the seashore, and 
How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? It's challenging, but it helps us articulate better and improve our accent. One day, we discuss idioms in class. Our teacher explains that idioms are phrases where the meaning isn't obvious from the individual words. For example, break the ice means to start a conversation in a social setting. Learning idioms helps us understand native speakers better and makes our speech more colorful. Our teacher also encourages us to listen to English songs and sing along. Music is a great way to improve pronunciation and rhythm in speech. I start listening to popular American songs and singing along. It's fun, and I can feel my pronunciation improving. Another tip our teacher gives us is to watch TV shows and mimic the actors. Shows like Friends and The Big Bang Theory are great because they have a lot of everyday conversations. I watch these shows with subtitles, pausing to repeat after the actors. This helps me get used to the flow and pace of natural speech. One Friday, our teacher organizes a field trip to a local market. We have to interact with vendors and practice our English in a real-world setting. I feel nervous at first, but it turns out to be a lot of fun. I ask about prices, bargain a bit, and even make small talk with a fruit seller. It's a great way to practice speaking in a natural environment. As the weeks go by, I notice my English improving. My confidence grows and I start participating more in class discussions. I even volunteer to give a short presentation about my hometown. I use the shadowing technique to prepare, and it goes well. My classmates and teacher are supportive, and it feels great to share a bit of my culture with them. One day, my teacher asks us to write and perform a short skit in English. We form groups and come up with a story. My group decides to do a funny scene in a restaurant. It's a great exercise in creativity and language use. We practice our lines, work on our pronunciation, and have a lot of laughs. Performing the skit helps me practice speaking in a different context and boosts my confidence. As my time in New York continues, I make a habit of reading English books before bed. I start with simple novels and gradually move on to more complex ones. Reading helps me expand my vocabulary and understand different sentence structures. I keep a dictionary by my side to look up unfamiliar words, but I try to guess their meanings from the context first. One weekend, I decide to explore the city with some friends from my language exchange group. We visit famous landmarks like the Statue of Liberty, Central Park, and Times Square. It's a fantastic experience, and I take every opportunity to practice my English with tourists and locals. I also try to think in English as much as possible, describing what I see and feel in my head. At the cafe, I get more comfortable interacting with customers. I learn to make small talk and ask about their day. It's a great way to practice conversational English and make connections with people. I also pick up on colloquial expressions and slang, which helps me sound more natural. Our teacher introduces us to the concept of storytelling. She explains that telling stories is a powerful way to practice speaking and improve fluency. We each take turns telling a short story in class. I share a funny incident from my childhood, and my classmates enjoy it. Storytelling helps me practice organizing my thoughts and speaking more fluidly. As the months go by, I feel more and more at home in New York. My English continues to improve, and I make lasting friendships. I enjoy my job, my classes, and the vibrant life of the city. I realize that learning a language is not just about studying, 
It's about immersing yourself in the culture, making connections, and using the language every day. I'm grateful for the support of my teacher and friends. Their encouragement and guidance have helped me grow. My journey of learning English has been challenging but rewarding. I look forward to continuing this journey and discovering new opportunities.